everyone. My name is Chad Frega. Um, I'm a recruiter with City Year. Um, City Year is a national education focused nonprofit where we hire uh, young idealists to uh, dedicate a year of their life to service where they work in a school setting as a student success coach. Um, I graduated also from University of the Pacific, so uh, welcome Tigers. Um, and I was very involved on campus, definitely bleed a lot of orange and black. Um, so appreciate you guys being here. I uh, majored in sociology and minored in ethnic studies and international studies. Um, <clears throat> and then afterwards, I did do a year of service with City Year in Sacramento. Um, and now I'm getting my master's in psychology to become an MFT. And in about a year, I'll be uh, a therapist. So I'm excited about that. Um, and excited to talk to you a little bit more about what City Year does um, throughout the country in, in fighting like education and equities um, and getting and giving you all an opportunity to do a great gap year program. So thanks for being here. I'll pass it over to Quinn. Thanks a lot, Chad. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Quinn Walker. I work as the Community Relations Specialist for an AmeriCorps program called the National Civilian Community Corps, or AmeriCorps NCCC. Uh, I always say this when I do an event with Chad and John, but it, it's, it's awesome because I, I'm a City Year alumni. I did City Year right after high school, actually, and then went and did Peace Corps right after undergrad, after college. And so I, I'm in good company and uh, can definitely speak about both these programs too. It is, they're both awesome opportunities. The one I'm going to talk to you about today, though, NCCC is an AmeriCorps program that's that's pretty unique in that you're able to travel around the country, uh, responding to direct service uh, in a variety of capacities. And so you don't just do one type of job for the duration of your 10 months of service, but you get to experience a lot of different work sectors all around the country. So it's it's an adventure, that's for sure. So uh, I'll get into that a little bit, but I've been working for the agency for about two years now. So nice to meet y'all. Right, and uh, lastly, my, my name is John Keller. I am the uh, Peace Corps recruiter based out of Sacramento um, area, and I, you know, cover the University of the Pacific. Um, the Peace Corps is a little bit different because we are entirely abroad, whereas City Year and, and um, AmeriCorps are both, you know, domestic in, in America. We are entirely out of the country. Um, so we have different opportunities between education, being a teacher in the classroom, um, agriculture, health, being a, a kind of a community health uh, teacher. We, we have a lot of different, different opportunities around the world in over 60 countries from, from Asia to Eastern Europe to, to Africa um, to uh, Latin America. Um, Peace Corps is a little bit uh, unique where you're, you're going to a different uh, a different uh, country. And one thing to note too, it is 27 months, so it is two years. So, you know, Chad and Quinn will definitely get into about the length of our programs. One thing to differentiate about, about Peace Corps is we are 27 months, it is two years. Um, so that's a little bit about, about Peace Corps. I myself served in Ethiopia from 2016 to 2018 as an education teacher. I taught in a classroom of about 60, uh, 60 kids. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit intro to Peace Corps. You know, we'll each get into in depth about each of our programs. And, you know, I think Chad and I are both lucky that we have jobs because Quinn could, could do it do it all because he, you know, like, as he said, he's done both of our programs. So, you know, if there's any questions about the differences between them, you can definitely go to, go to Quinn on that too. Great. And now we're going to give um, each of the organizations a chance to go a little bit more in depth about the opportunities um, and things that they wanted to talk with you about today. And then for those who join, just join the call, once they do the um, organization overviews, then we are going to do a panel where they're going to answer certain questions. Um, and then we will break out into breakout rooms so you can um, visit each organization that you would like to connect more with. Um, but again, feel free to ask any questions. Um, let us know if you have any questions or put them in the chat and I will be monitoring that and let the, the um, organizations know. But Chad, do you want to go ahead and start off with City Year? Sure. Um, we have, you said 10 minutes each or 10 minutes total we're doing? Um, 10 minutes each. Okay. Cool. I'll go ahead and jump in with City Year. Um, <clears throat> as I was talking about, City Year is a national education focused nonprofit. Um, I think the best way to do it is just to show a, a quick little video. Um, it's about three minutes, and then I'll go into the, 
the back end a little bit more about, about the program. So, um, oh, can you uh, enable sharing options, Dave? Perfect. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so I'll show this really quick and then um, we'll get into it. The yellow jacket at City Year uh, is something that students, when they see a person walking in a yellow jacket, they know that they can trust that adult. And it's this really many different roles that city years play in the students' lives, but they always know with the yellow jacket that they can trust that person. We do something called walking school bus. So every morning you can count on these yellow jackets to be walking through the community and helping walk students to school. This motivates the students to come to school because they can see their city year out the door and be like, oh, it's Mr. Victor and I want to go walk with him. We have seen a really positive response with our students. So being a city year is a lot like being a superhero on our campus. You get to be this person that the students trust with literally anything, but you also get to help them in their academics. You're really at this middleman between the student and the teacher. And that's a really, really unique relationship because I'm not here to grade the students. I'm really here to help them grow in a variety of aspects. And so they trust you a lot more because they know that you're not grading them. It really gives them that extra person that believes in them and who will give them the support and that time to get to know them. Being a city year means that I need to be a role model to my students. I need to be the person who I want them to be. I have had a city year from first grade all the way up to sixth grade this year. The city years here are amazing. Mr. Victor is very funny. He's very kind. He's also very smart. He's helped me improve my reading and helped me with any problems I had in either reading or math or any conflict with any other student. The way I've seen Jenny grow this year is definitely in her academics. She's been doing better and she's always working hard to do good in school. And also socially, before there'd be times when I would see her alone, but now I see her more open and she's definitely more open towards me too. It is a pleasure to work with City Year. It's amazing. They are amazing part, uh, part of our team. I just can't imagine myself uh, being a classroom teacher just with 33 students in the classroom. I mean, City Year is a necessity, especially at our school with social and emotional needs. The tier one support allows classrooms to have that different levels of support um, because the city years are able to help students with different needs while also allowing the teacher to go on with their lesson and support the rest of the class. And that's me redirecting students or if they have a quick question, I answer it. For tier two support, what I do is I have small groups. Small groups could have from four to five students. We pull students that are in between being at grade level and um, a little bit below. We try to take that middle section um, and it really allows the students to have that small group intervention to help them get up to grade level. When I first started here five years ago and got to meet City Year for the first time, we did school-wide assessments. And in those assessments, we realized that only 11 of our students were able to read on grade level. To date, nearly half of our kids are reading on grade level and persevering beyond grade level standards. City Year is a huge part of that endeavor. City Year invests authentically in our students. And through that authentic investment in our students and families, relationships blossom. When it comes to academic deficits, organizations that put children first are those that should be on the front lines of service. And in those front lines, City Year is unwavering. I think you're muted. Yeah. Thank you, Chad. Okay. There. Let me reshare my PowerPoint here. Okay. So, hopefully, you got a chance to see a little bit more about um, City Year and what we do. Now, I'll kind of go into the why and a little bit more about City Year. Let me just check the time. Okay, cool. So, <clears throat> 
we do what we do because we still know that across the country, there are nearly 800,000 students who do not complete high school every single year. Um, when I did this program six years ago now, that was a million. So we're heading in the right direction as a country, but we're definitely still very far behind um, in terms of inequities, because we also know that of those 800,000 students, 50% of them only go to about 12% of our high schools. And so City Year knows that, you know, where you grow up and where your zip code is definitely um, depicts student success. And so we want to be able to see what ways we can solve this problem. And we know based off our research from Johns Hopkins University that we can, we can make effective change when it comes to identifying students who are off track and not on time to graduate. And so what we mean by that is we, we identify students who um, are basically behind on these ABCs. So it's not groundbreaking work here. It's just focusing on attendance, behavior, and coursework performance. And when we work between third through ninth grade. So that's the age range we kind of work with. And we're identifying students who are in these three areas are maybe basically off track and not on time to graduate. For example, if, if a student is exhibiting one or more of those early warning signs, they have a 75% chance of not completing high school. But if we can get them on track and on time by 10th grade, then they're going to be three to four times more likely to graduate, right? So that's kind of like the why of kind of what we do. Um, what's it like being a city or core member? You saw a little bit of it in the video, but it's definitely that like additional capacity in the classroom, that one-on-one -on -one small group support. Um, you're using data to track your students. We also support an after-school program. I tell folks um, it is not a year off, it's a year on. Uh, and the reason why is because it is a pretty long work day. So um, you're working from basically 7.30 in the morning to about six o'clock at night. Um, and you're doing everything from in-classroom support, doing literacy and or math tutoring, as well as um, attendance phone calls home, figuring out why students aren't coming to school, what sort of resources can you provide to, to make sure students have maybe an easier access, uh, then obviously the after-school program and, and homework and enrichment activities. So, and then the great thing is you do have, you know, people across the country who are coming and doing this program. We have 3,000 positions open every single year. Um, and so it's really inspiring to see that we still see young people to this day still, um, you know, serve uh, our country in a really meaningful way. Uh, here's my city here, but we can skip over that really quickly. Um, I know some of the questions go over some of the benefits, but to kind of go quickly over this, um, we are like a, a, a stipend based uh, organization because you technically are a full time volunteer with AmeriCorps. So city year is an AmeriCorps program. It's one of the state and national programs that is under the umbrella of AmeriCorps. Uh, and you do get a, a weekly living stipend that basically pays for the amount of expenses that you would need. So it's basically just enough to live off of, um, ranges from 635 to actually 960 now, and that goes off based off of location. Uh, you do get an education award at the end of it, um, and this is also just like Quinn's program as well with American Triple C, you get the 6,000, uh, I think 200 plus now. Um, basically, it's a scholarship that you'll get that you can put towards educational expenses or student loans or graduate school and things like that. Um, let's see. You do have like additional scholarships you can apply for through different universities um, after city or if you're going on to do graduate work. Um, and then the majority of, of folks who um, do apply to city or go on to do nonprofit education work, but you don't have to want to be in education and join city or ultimately <clears throat> the two Harvard Law School roommates who founded city or thought that one day everybody after high school will be asking themselves where am I going to do my city year? Hence the name city year. Obviously that didn't happen. We, <laughs> over 30 years later, didn't accomplish that goal, but <clears throat> uh, we do encourage people to be more civically engaged in our community. So people go into business and law and medicine. So all different types of different programs that people will um, doing a gap year opportunity with city year. Um, and how do you apply is pretty simple. You basically pick a location. Um, you could tell us that you interested in serving anywhere and we'll put you anywhere in the country but if you want to serve at a particular location you can apply directly there um, then we have a couple application deadlines left so our next one's march 5th um, and then you do go through like an interview have a professional reference um, 
and, and you'll know basically within a month uh, of when you apply. So that's kind of the basics and the overview of City Year. I know we're going to go into big breakouts um, after the panel presentation, but I just wanted to give a quick overview of it. Um, and I'm sure we'll take questions afterwards too, but just for sake of time, I want to go ahead and pass it to the next one. So I think Quinn would be the easiest one to, to jump to next. Cool. Thanks, Chad. And City Year always makes such awesome videos. The videos are fun, so I'll go ahead and share a short video as well. The one that I usually like to share is from actual AmeriCorps and C Corps members who made it at the end of their year. Uh, and then I'll kind of provide some context to that video after that. So I'll go ahead and share that. All right, got that up here. There we go. Yeah, I think one of the best things about NCCC is being able to live and work all under the same roof. At the end of the 10 months, you're going to wish that you had more time with them. Mercury has helped me become more independent and this helped me realize that there's so much more to life. I am much more physically able than I thought I was. Like, I've climbed mountains and I've done crazy hikes. I can adapt to anything. I can, I can go from living in a garage to a dorm to a school to a cabin just fine. If you are willing to fully immerse yourself into the program and you do have that service mentality and that servant heart, you, you can very much survive and thrive in the program and it can very much benefit you in the future. It helps you grow whether you're just out of high school or just out of college and they give you everything you need to be able to do it. So like, why not? AmeriCorps is beautiful because you can wake up in Washington and two days later wake up in Southern California. But I think what makes traveling so fun is the people you go with. And if you're around people who are adventurous and encouraging, you're going to have so much fun. Well, if you want to help people, you can do it. Like, you don't need to be some crazy service person previous to this. If you have a heart of service, you're gonna step up. To kind of thrive in a team and make sure your team thrives is kind of just being of service to them, making sure that they're confident in what they're doing, that they're comfortable, and that they, they just are doing something that they enjoy, and it's not a task for them, but it's actually a passion or something they want to do. And for me, that builds a stronger team mentality of how to work with each other, how to support the other person, I let people in to understand me more and I also like listen to them. I'm so thankful then that we just got randomly put together and now like we're all such good friends. Definitely life changing and beneficial. I'm so glad I've done AmeriCorps and Triple C because it has been a life affirming experience. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so that was a video created by an NCCC team that completed their service about a year ago. Let me go ahead and share my presentation. We'll go through this relatively quickly, give you some context to that video. All right. We had the most amazing family vacation. Let's go! Oh my God. This is gorgeous. God. Okay, hopefully you can see that. All right, so AmeriCorps and Triple C, it's one of the branches of AmeriCorps, Chad alluded to this when he was talking about city year. There's actually 75,000 people who do AmeriCorps every year in one of many different programs. 
but NCCC is really unique. It's uh, completely team-based. The mission is to strengthen communities and develop leaders through team-based national service. And so essentially, you know, it's 10 to 12 month full-time residential national service program. You can be 18 to 26 years, 26 years old. So we have a lot of young adults who either go into the program after high school or go into the program after college. And I know that that's, that's where I was. I was looking for a service, national service opportunity after college because I graduated. I had an idea of what my passions were and where I wanted my career to go, but wasn't a hundred percent on that and didn't want to jump straight into a nine to five just because like the grace period on my student loans were coming up and I needed to, to start paying that off. I wanted to go explore, have an adventure this NCCC program would allow you to do that because you actually travel the country in teams of other young individuals, 18 to 26, helping communities in a variety of different needs. So uh, it's 100%, you know, they free to, to, to go and join the program. They give you a living stipend similar to what City Year was, uh, what Chad was talking about with City Year. You get an education award of $6,395, which you can use to pay back undergraduate loans or leverage that to get scholarships for graduate school. And again, you do everything together as a team. So you, you don't have to go and do this type of experience and feel isolated. You travel the country essentially in these 15 passenger vans uh, as a team and do a variety of different projects. So there's four different campuses across the United States. I work out of the Sacramento campus, but this kind of gives you a layout of the different regions that we operate in. And you do three rounds of service. So essentially how it works is nonprofits or local government agencies across the country apply to have an AmeriCorps and C team help them for approximately two to three months. That could be Habitat for Humanity, building houses, that could be a food bank, uh, organizing and delivering meals. Uh, that's something that we're doing a lot during COVID-19 is you've seen this huge drop off in the number of volunteers available to help out non-for-profit non organizations. So for example, Habitat for Humanity relies on their volunteers to build houses for low-income individuals, right? The food bank relies on volunteers to process, sort, and distribute their foods and goods. But because of COVID-19, there's been the gap in the number of volunteers able to assist. And so they apply, apply for an NCCC team who comes into those communities, fills that gap for, for part of the year, and then they move on to a different project. So they may be up with United Way in Seattle, helping out with um, a food bank in Seattle, Washington. And then after three months of doing that, they drive down to Southern California and work in Joshua Tree National Park building trails. After three months in Joshua Tree National Park, they go out to Salt Lake City, Utah, and help facilitate a COVID vaccination, vaccination distribution center. So um, they, like right now, several of our teams are working at vaccine distribution areas at stadiums, for example, doing logistics and helping um, get those elderly and most vulnerable vaccinated. So we primarily work in these five focus areas urban and rural development, infrastructure improvement, energy conversation, conservation, natural disasters. We have teams that respond to the wildfires from this past year. I know if you're from you know, Stockton, Sacramento area, we got really impacted by all the smoke. So we directly go out and, and do a lot of work in response to those natural disasters. That could be uh, sorting donations and helping communities recover from wildfire or wildfire prevention doing controlled burns, fire field mitigation, building defensible spaces, et cetera. So we do a lot of different things at NCCC, which is awesome because if you want to get exposed to a lot of different types of work, this would be the program for you. And I know that my 10 minutes is probably coming up here, so we'll have a chance to, to talk more about this in the Q&A and then in the breakout rooms, but respond to disasters, I kind of talked about all of that. We do have specialty teams that do specific types of important work. We have a, a program, a sub program that works directly with FEMA. So if you're passionate about disaster management, we can talk about that. 
and um, yeah, then it's completely free. We pay for all of your food, housing, living expenses, travel expenses. Um, so it's a great opportunity in that way. And yeah, we do have lots of application deadlines coming up. Depending on when you would want to join the program, we can find a time for you to apply and get accepted that would work within your schedule and your idea of, of your next steps. So I would just say, if you're thinking about you know, going to graduate school or you don't want to jump into a virtual workspace, you know, NCCC is boots on the ground, in-person service with COVID safety in mind. Uh, but if that's if you're looking for an adventure and kind of to get out and travel and, and see the country and meet critical needs, be a great option for you. Thank you. All right, I think I'm up. Thanks, Gwen. Um, so my name is John Keller. I'm with the Peace Corps, and I think it. Um, I will share my screen here. Oh, there we go. And as you will see, let's see. So the one thing that differs about the Peace Corps is we are a 27 month uh, service organization. So we are two years. You are going to um, see a familiar format. Can and I'll show you. Start with this. Oh, hey, John, we actually can't hear your vi your video. Thank, okay, Oops, shoot. let me share audio. Thank you for giving me the heads up there. I think you might have to like stop share and then- Yeah, that's right. Thank yeah. you for that. You know, we still struggle with Zoom. <laughs> I might yeah. be a little younger than your professors, but I still have the competen competency of them. Um, there we go. Thought I hit share computer sound and I didn't. All right. Yeah. Society is built on the backs of hardworking women. Women like my host mother, Monty. She's kind of my hero. Home is a small fat roof hut in the upper part of the country. Every day she wakes up at the crack of dawn and begins the day with rituals. Sweep, cook, clean. Breakfast is whatever is left from last night's dinner. Send the kids to school, do the laundry, wash the pots, tend the animals, greet the American volunteer. Yes, Amasi. 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 Put on a panya and head to the fields. Chop, harvest, lift, thresh the rice. Sneak away from the husband for a while to gossip with friends. Load up with the day's spoils and head back home. Dinner time. But first, pump water and carry it home. Milk the cows, light the cook fire, slice, pound, stir. Peanut sauce, cassava leaf sauce, potato leaf sauce, fish soup, and rice. Lots and lots of rice. After the family's bellies have been filled and hunger satisfied, bathing time. But before bed, a brief moment of calm around the embers of the cook fire. These are the everyday rituals of thousands of women across Guinea. The drive, the dedication, and the sheer force of these women inspire me. Some might call them merely homemakers, but these qualities show that making a place home is the work of heroes. Everyday heroes like Monty. So that's a kind of a little day in the life of what it's like to kind of be a Peace Corps. Oh, I'm doing the same thing as Quinn, aren't I? Sorry, another video play there. Um, so I'm going to fly through my presentation as well with my with my seven minutes here, and we are going to get into a little bit about what it means to to be in in the Peace Corps. Okay, can everybody see my screen? All right. Yep. Okay, so I one out of two, not too bad. Um, uh, first of all, I'm going to probably talk really quickly. So, I mean, if you have any questions, I'd say save them for the breakout room because I know I talk really fast. Uh, it's one of my great flaws as a human being. Um, so just keep that in mind as I zoom through a ton of information. Um, so this is, uh, I wanted to give a little pictures of my service. As I said, I served as a volunteer in Ethiopia from 2016, 2018. This is what my school looked like. I was an English teacher. Um, this, is, this is my school right here. So you'll see a couple of pictures throughout, throughout my service. Um, here's the, the broad overview of the Peace Corps mission. 
um, there are three goals. We have been around since 1961. Uh, they are to, to train people to learn skills and take them and train people from, need, from countries that need it. Uh, goal two is to learn, learn the language, learn the culture, learn skills um, from people from that country. And goal three is to bring those, that knowledge of skill and culture and, um, and language back to America and teach other Americans about it. Um, there are six areas of concentration for the Peace Corps. There are agriculture, youth development, you can see them here. Our biggest one is education with about 4,000 positions. And then they're about evenly split from there. Um, if you are interested in agriculture or health, to give you a little perspective on what that means, is that they're basically like a health teacher or an agriculture teacher where you're going in, you're not, you know, banging wounds if you're a health volunteer, you're promoting hand washing, you are um, building maybe bathrooms, you are doing vaccine drives or promoting health among uh, young children. So you're, you're kind of like a community health teacher rather than, you know, sticking in any needles or doing, fixing any wounds there. Uh, in terms of agriculture, it's along the same lines where you are promoting kind of uh, techniques to have more efficient farming techniques. Um, so that's a little bit a broad, very broad overview about them. And I would say come into my breakout room, you know, ask me more specific questions or connect with me. Um, I'll post my email here in a bit about your specific program. Here's a little bit of information about where you can serve. This map is about maybe a year old or so. Um, so we are actually in Kenya now and we are not in China anymore. And that doesn't have anything to do with COVID-19. Um, so those are some that's like the newest up to date um, is all of these plus uh, Kenya and minus China. Um, one thing to note is that about half of our positions are in Africa, about 25% in Latin America and 25% in, in Asia and Eastern Europe. Um, in terms of the language requirements, the only requirements are Latin, mostly in Latin America where you need at least two semesters of college Spanish or three years of high school Spanish, or already, if you already have fluency in Spanish, that's fine as well. So there are some language requirements. There are, are the same requirements for French, for Cameroon, and, uh, and Ivory Coast, and I think one or two others. Um, so those outside of those requirements, there are none. I served in Ethiopia myself. I didn't know uh, off on Aroma, the language I ended up learning. Uh, so that's, you will have intensive training. Um, Peace Corps, I say 27 months, because it's three months of training where you get Three, where you get three months, uh, four hours per day of how to do your job and four hours per day of language. So it's very kind of intensive to make sure that you are good to go. This is the house that I live in. I like to give a little bit of, you know, view of exactly what a Peace Corps volunteer's house looks like. I lived right here on the left-hand side. Um, and that you, there are certain requirements for housing for the Peace Corps and basically to make sure you're safe. I had to, you know, move quickly here because I want to stay, abide by my 10 minutes. So you get a living stipend, um, your housing is totally covered, your mental, your, sorry, well, I guess your mental, your medical and dental coverage is completely and utterly covered. Everything you can imagine is covered by the Peace Corps. Um, you get student loan kind of deferment and cancellation. It's for your public loans, you basically won't be paying anything on them while you're in the Peace Corps and you get vacation time and career skills and training. I got a TEFL certificate, which is teaching English as a foreign language because of the Peace Corps. This is the host family I lived with during my first three months of service. Um, so you will kind of be embedded with a family to see how they, how they you know, speak to each other, learn about their culture um, and what they watch on TV, things like that. Safety and health, um, you know, again, kind of breezing through this, this is very content based. So I'm kind of just very briefly going over it. Um, there are 24 seven medical officers. You will have doctors dedicated to Peace Corps members volunteers health uh, 24 seven. I had kidney stones while in service and called at 3 a.m. And they were there on call 24 seven. So they talked me through um, what I needed to do and really actually what my neighbors needed, to, where they needed to take me. Um, same with security officers as well. Um, so yeah, benefits after serving you get, this number is actually up to over $10,000 where it's just a check right into your bank account um, where you, they understand that if you are making a living stipend of $150 or $500 or $750 per month, you need money when you come back to America. So that's why they give you a little over $10,000. There's all sorts of graduate school benefits as well, where you get at least 30% off graduate schools for um, quite a few different graduate schools. In fact, like University of Oregon, it's a full ride. Um, University of South Florida is a full ride, but like George Washington, it's 30%. So it's, you know, you're still paying $70,000. Um, so that's a broad overview there. There's a benefits during service, after service, more about graduate school. Like I said, over 130 universities. Um, this is from my uh, my service. This was my last uh, day in service where I gave a speech um, in Oromifa, off on Oromifa, the language I learned um, to, to you know students from the school. And it was a very kind of impactful moment there. Um, 
here's a little bit about the application process. One thing to note, we don't have application deadlines right now uh, because it's kind of a rolling application basis. Uh, so here is basically the overview of the application process. And, uh, and so really what you're looking at now is from the day that you apply, you will be leaving nine to 12 months in the future. Um, so that's one thing to note there. So it is a little bit extended um, because there is kind of a bureaucracy, you have to get medical clearance um, for that. Um, do your research, you're doing that right now, so good job on that. And one thing I always like to note um, here at the very end is that it's never too late to be a volunteer. If you get your dream job out of, out of college, out of the University of the Pacific, then you take it, that's great. Um, you can be, I didn't join the Peace Corps until about two years after I graduated college. Um, you can be 30, you can be 40, you can be 50, you, or you can just be, you can be 22 or 23. Uh, so there's a, a myriad of different kind of age groups that join, join the Peace Corps. And lastly, here's a picture of my town. Um, I was, like I said, I served in Ethiopia, but it was a rainforest. Um, I, it rained about every day and it was absolutely magnificent. So I had, you know, I had an image of Ethiopia that was not what I lived in. That's one of the great things about the Peace Corps. You can kind of shatter your, what you know about a certain place. So with that being said, that is um, my contact information. I'll kind of post it here in a minute as well. Um, so that wraps up kind of a very broad, what is the Peace Corps? Um, and, you know, I'd love to join, join my breakout room, join all of our breakout rooms so I can give you a little bit more content, a little more meat to, to what the Peace Corps is. Thank you. And um, I'll ask um, John Quinn in um, chat if you have any contact information or um, like the website where students can apply or get more information. If you want to put that in the chat, just in case students, um, if any students have class at one and need to drop off a little bit early, um, then they will have that information. So whatever you would like to provide, if you wanted to, to add that in the chat, that would be great. Um, so again, we're just going to ask um, some panel questions to everyone and, um, and then we'll um, do the breakout rooms. But again, students, if you have any questions, feel free to, to let us know. But we wanted to um, talk a little bit more about some of the opportunities that are available like right now with the organizations. Um, I know a lot of you mentioned the specific um, locations, but there, if there's anything else you'd like to add, and then also how has COVID-19 impacted um, your organization and the opportunities um, that are available? Yeah, sure. I've got to go the same format. I'll start us off. Um, because City Year is an 11 month AmeriCorps member commitment, like our all of our programs pretty much do start in late July, early August and go till about the middle of June. So we recruit the school year, this school year for next school year's core. Um, so that's kind of how it works. If you are graduating in December, we do have this thing called like a mid-year position where they start in like either November or January, depending on the site year applying to, um, and you can basically do a half a year. So everything I just described, but you know, for all of our December graduates who are taking an extra semester, um, we do have uh, one of the opportunities for that. And then uh, for us, like I said, that map of 29 locations is where we serve. So there's no other locations outside of that. Um, and that's pretty much what we do. So pass it to Quinn. Oh, I forgot to talk about COVID-19, sorry. Um, Yes, because uh, COVID-19 has affected, we can't be in person, right? So that video that you saw was like not happening right now. Um, we're serving alongside our partner teachers like virtually, just like you know all of our teachers across the country are doing. Um, it was pretty clear from the moment the pandemic hit that the from the top down from our CEO made a statement that like, we can just like, we, we can't just not serve our students. Like we have to be there. So we made a huge commitment, um, huge financial um, campaign commitment as well. So we're really solidified with funding um, and we're doing just really a great job of being able to be adaptive. The biggest supports that's been needed from our partner schools that has been requested from us is the SEL support, the social emotional learning. Um, uh, I heard just like a tragic, um, and just like trigger warning for anybody who is experiencing mental health um, issues, but you know, just 20 minutes up the road from Stockton, there there was a student who um, you know took their own life um, in Lockford, and it really just kind of hit me about like we all just need someone just to talk to, and like City or really does that, you know. Um, it really is an opportunity for them to you know connect with students on a more humanistic level. Um, and so 
that one really hit me as far as like the amount of need that like really is needed from our students across the country. So really proud to say that like City is trying to work in that space. Thanks for sharing about that, Chad. Um, with AmeriCorps and Triple C rolling application deadlines, and so if you graduated, for example, in May, we have start dates in June. We also have start dates in October. We also have start dates in December. And so, depending on when you would like to start your ten-month service experience, you can kind of apply to to meet that. Uh, ideal start time. Now we have four regional campuses, Sacramento, Denver, Mississippi, and Iowa, but those are just like base camps for a month of training. Once you do that month of training, you then go and work in the three different locations around the country for two to three months at a time. So I kind of alluded that to that already. You know, you could be two and a half months up in Montana, then you can respond to a disaster and spend two and a half months in Florida. And then you could go to, you know, Hawaii and do two and a half months working on a Boys and Girls Club. And so we also work in um, the uh, U.S. territories as well as Alaska and Hawaii as well. So not just within the continental United States. So all over the place you can do AmeriCorps and Triple C. And what's unique about our ability to serve during COVID, uh, we had a brief suspension in March and April, and then we resumed service with uh, COVID guidelines being essentially we work as a team and that team forms a bubble. So when they enter the program, they get tested for COVID-19 and then they have that family unit. And what's different and allows us to serve like, like we normally do, unlike maybe city year is that AmeriCorps and Triple C doesn't really engage with the public. A lot of their work is in not isolation, but as a team, right? So when they're building a house, they build a house as a team. When they're working at food bank, they're working as a team. They're not necessarily interacting with large groups of people all the time. Um, and if they do, you know, they have a, we have a mask policy where they have to have their masks on. They have to take proper precautions. Um, they have to report if they're feeling symptomatic or something like that. But um, again, we're kind of that essential worker um, piece where we're going in and filling the gap, which in a lot of times these nonprofits provide, you know, life-sustaining services, and so they can't not have volunteers come in to help, and that's where AmeriCorps and Triple C is kind of coming in and, and helping out in that way. Yeah, and to answer that question on the Peace Corps end, um, our application process is a little bit extended. Um, so, like I said, it's completely rolling your applications, but it used to be six to nine months. Now it's nine to twelve months as we re-enter kind of um, re-enter service for for Peace Corps. Peace Corps is uniquely affected by by COVID nineteen because we are sending you abroad, right? So you you can get tested here in America, but ultimately you, it's inevitable that you interact with the public, that you interact with your community and they might not, almost certainly will not have the same um, COVID kind of guidelines that we have here in America. Although, you know, there's some like loaded questions there about whether, how we're doing with that. But um, nonetheless, the Peace Corps is a US government kind of program. And so they have to say like, hey, this volunteer is safe um, to, to go to this country. So we pulled volunteers out back in March and we have not sent anybody back. We have virtual volunteers right now, um, but we are looking to have full re-entry uh, by the beginning of next year. And actually as of Monday, there was some very positive news about how our re-entry into Peace Corps and there should be some more positive news um, within the next coming months because vaccines are playing a big role in our rollout of Peace Corps. Um, but you can apply now because it's a nine to 12 month application process. So we will be out and rolling out in January of next year. So you are actually fine um, or we should, should be back to our 8,000 volunteers by January of next year. So you won't have any problems there. Um, the application has changed a little bit. You used to be able to apply to specific countries. Now you can only apply to two areas. So you can only apply to Asia or Latin America. Um, and that's because as we roll out our, our volunteers, you, you, we want to be able to 
pull from a pool rather than having to have the complications of, of each people applying to each specific country. Um, so you can you know make your preferences known, but there's no guarantee there. So Peace Corps is you know affected by COVID-19 um, you know significantly, but we are you know great with our funding. We got to actually increased funding for our, our re-entry into, into service and we look to be up and running um, in, in full capacity um, because it's a phased rollout. Um, starting in a few months here that will be up and good to go by, by January. But that's a, it's a particularly poignant question for, for the Peace Corps because, you know, your safety, our volunteer safety is is understandably our number one priority, right? So um, that's hopefully answers that question. If you have any more, feel free to ask me. I, I try to be as transparent as possible, but sometimes you're right. I have to kind of give relatively ambiguous answers because the answers are just ambiguous. Great, thank you. And what are some of the, the qualities that you look for in candidates and also what do you look for on someone's resume if, if they've applied? Yeah, I'll answer some of those. Um, we have kind of like a list of competencies that we look for that makes a great candidate. Um, the first one is that, that you are mission online. So meaning that you do want to fight the work of education and equity in our country. Um, talking about education equity is impossible without talking about racial inequities in our country. Um, understanding that different groups of people may be receiving different resources and that you wanting to work to combat that, it needs to be like ingrained into like who you are and what you do. Um, so that's something that like we really look for and see that makes a really great candidate. Another kind of aspect is like a growth mindset. So, you know, we truly believe that all students can succeed and we need that of our core members as well. You know, just because a student is behind doesn't mean that they are you know, less than or that they're not able to um, with the proper amount of care and work that we, we truly believe that we can um, affect change in our communities. And so we wanna be able to see that in our core members. Um, the third one is being able to talk about like leadership and teamwork and kind of combine those two. Um, leadership we really believe is, is, a, is a verb, uh, not a title. It's something that you do, it's something that you're able to act. And time and time again, the research says that the best educators are always the best leaders. Um, and so how you've been able to inspire others to affect change. And then the last one is, is your, your kind of sense of like cultural awareness and understanding. When we're entering in spaces that we understand are uh, high need and under-resourced type of communities, um, we wanna be able to make sure that our core members have reflected on their own identities and how those identities may shape or show up during your service. Um, it's something that we really look into in that we, we see that the core members who do have a clear understanding of what, how that's gonna show up uh, tend to do a really great job with connecting with our students, which ultimately is our number one goal. Um, as far as resume stuff goes, uh, you don't have to have like specific experience working as like a tutor. We're not looking for professional tutors or anything. Um, I, I, I'll leave you with just with a quote as far as uh, what I did when, when, when I was uh, a core member, I, I wrote in our city or room, um, nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. And so like you can have all the best tutoring skills of all time, but if you can't connect with a student, if you can't um, build a relationship with them, uh, if you can't show that you're in it really for the right reasons, then, then it doesn't really matter how many skill sets you have. So um, it's kind of a two way street when it comes to the amount of skills and experiences you have, as well as your passions and, and who you are as a person kind of showing up for service. So I'll kind of leave it at that. Yeah, and for AmeriCorps and C, you know, there's not any specific technical skills that you have to have. Most of it's going to be more on the soft skill side of things. Um, getting along well with others <laughs> would be one just be based on the team nature of the program. I mean, if you uh, have difficulty managing um, interpersonal conflict and things of that nature, it can be trying to go through 10 months with the same people and see them over and over and over again if you um, you know, if frustrations start to come about and if you can't handle and process that well, uh, that can be difficult. Um, just the flexibility, I mean, you're, you're changing locations. Oftentimes we're, we're a disaster response agency. And so you may be up in Montana, really enjoying your experience working in the outdoors, building trails, doing, um, working at the local soup kitchen and the food bank, but then we have a disaster like COVID-19 and we need to pull you 
to Florida to help run a vaccination center. So that is a very quick turnaround. We may give you 48 hours to get your team ready to go and to drive to Florida. Um, and so it's exciting in that way, uh, but you have to be uh, flexible, flexible and understand that things change in real time very quickly. Uh, the team leaders, uh, which are is a position that's kind of manages each individual team, those tend to be college graduates. Those requirements technically, technically are a little bit more stringent. But other than that, I mean, what we look for in an application is previous volunteer experience. And so if you've gone and, and volunteered in the Stockton community before, that would certainly um, help set you apart and as a candidate. Um, yeah, it's, you know, Peace Corps is kind of similar to all, all of those. I really like that line by Chad. Nobody um, cares how much you know until they know how much you care. I'm going to I'm going to do that in the future. I'm just making that known publicly. Um, so to give maybe some some hard answers here, there's three things we look for in the Peace Corps. Um, service, leadership, and intercultural experiences. So, uh, you know, Chad and Quinn kind of touched on all these things. In the Peace Corps, 95% of people do have a college degree, so it's um, much more prevalent there. Um, but service, leadership, intercultural experience. And when I say intercultural experience, it doesn't have to necessarily be outside of this country. It just has to be with a culture different than your own. Um, so um, those are kind of the, the very three simple things that you, when you're making your resume, um, that you can, you know, highlight and, and at least for Peace Corps, you can go back as far as high school. Um, we want, really want to see any examples of your service, any of your leadership, any of your intercultural experience. Um, and that's to show that you're okay with, you know, flexibility. That's one of the big things in, in Peace Corps, as is similar with the, the other AmeriCorps and City years, is your ability to adapt to different situations, because you're going to certainly be placed in uncomfortable situations. You're certainly going to be placed in, in, in situations where you have no idea what you're doing. And it doesn't matter if you're the strongest resume in the world, um, when you're in a in a van with 20 other people and there's some people yelling at you right um it it, it really matters what how you can handle yourself in the situation so it, that's also very difficult to quantify right um so service leadership intercultural um experiences are, are what we're looking for in the peace corps and then kind of on the opposite side from can you talk a little bit about what um, people who go through these programs, what skill set that they've developed going through the program for um, that would help with their own career development? Yeah, one of the biggest things that I see people, and this is probably pretty similar to, to Quinn as well, is when I talk to people like, why are you applying to City Air? They say, I want to help people. And I'm like, okay, well, that's good. In City Air, we kind of help you kind of formulate that a little bit more. So like, what does that exactly mean? Like, what are you gonna be doing? Like, um, you know, for example, I use my example of like, uh, I wanted to be a teacher and I found out quickly that I did not wanna be a teacher and I found reasons why. And I was able to articulate that, right? Because of my experiences. And then I was able to figure out, oh, okay, what a part of this impact sector do I wanna really be a part of? So I'm thinking through a year of service with, with Sydney, you're able to really fine tune a little bit more about where exactly you are going to fit. And the second thing is just, you know, you learn a, a lot about yourself when it comes to what service means to you and, and what that looks like. Um, and so we talk a lot about self care, we talk a lot about, you know, being able to uh, do service for the long haul and being able to work with people and figure out like, how's that going to look. Um, and then last thing is just like adaptability. I feel like doing a year of service doing 1700 hours, I feel like after that, I feel like I can do anything. Um, and so probably not as crazy as a, as a Peace Corps time or as awesome as a Peace Corps time. Um, but Quinn can probably attest to that doing three years of total service. Um, it feels like like any job is like almost like easy because it's like, okay, I've done things way more difficult than this before. So um, yeah, I just wanna say that. Yeah, I think this, the same thing with Peace Corps, City Air, AmeriCorps and Triple C, I mean, it's the stories that you have, right? When it's the it's the anecdotal information that you can provide in interviews when somebody asks you, tell me about a difficult experience that you had to overcome. And you can talk about for the NCCC context, you could talk about how well during the you know craziest time in recent memory during COVID-19, um, I answered the call and went and responded to wildfires that were impacting California. I went and helped at COVID vaccination and testing centers. I went and helped uh, at food banks getting the most needy their food when there wasn't 
any other options for them, right? So it's, it's these stories that you're able to tell. I mean, you can think of the same uh, with what Chad was talking about with the student law firm and how you provide these essential services in crucial times. Peace Corps, I mean, you have the wildest and most interesting stories ever and your cultural competency goes through the roof with experiences like Peace Corps. And so that's what makes these ex particular programs so dynamic and unique is that it's, it's not your typical job that in, in you know that your competition honestly it is competitive work workplace out there you're going to have experiences that are going to make you much more competitive just based on the fact that they are so unique um and the fact that you know you're you're serving the united states government i mean it's, it's a form of national service just like the, the the military is and so there is a sense of esteem and respect and dignity that that comes with that type of work Yeah, and one, I guess first to answer Chevalier's question here, um, you cannot serve in the Peace Corps with a dependent child. So I can kind of um, get that out of the way. Um, but so in terms of when you're serving uh, in the Peace Corps, one thing that's really unique about, about the Peace Corps is a lot of times when you graduate college, you kind of start at the bottom of the totem pole. Um, in the Peace Corps, you are the totem pole. You are designing the projects. You are executing the projects. You are accounting for them. You're getting the training to do them. Um, and so that's one really unique thing um, is that you decide you have a lot of independence to, to do what you want. Like, for example, um, the Peace Corps gave a training to me and a counterpart from my town. And they said, well, what's your biggest problem in your town? And gone to you, my counterpart said, well, uh, we don't have, we, we teach ICT class, but we don't have any computers. Um, our, our school is very new. It was only two years old. So there, there were no computers in, in our school. Um, or sorry, there were, there were three computers for the teachers that were used to like create tests. Um, and so there are no computers to teach ICT class. So Gandhi and I, you know, worked together to create a, a grant for with the federal government. And we got a small projects assistant grant um, to get 18 computers for Lalo Secondary School, right? So. Um, it, it was, you know, me working with Gandhi to identify problems, to go out, get the funding for it, to find, you know, a, you are buying computers from somebody close to your town, right? So you have to do from point A to point Z, you have to do everything there. Um, so the, one the thing that's, um, Peace Corps kind of understands that you, you are unique. Everyone has different skills. I also, another example is I like to garden. So Peace Corps um, gave me the training about how, how to garden, about how to make a permagarden, how to do, um, gave me seeds. So I, being a teacher, you know, that's not part of my role, but they supported me in, in my endeavor there. So Peace Corps kind of understands that each person is unique and they also understand that um, you're not going to be in Peace Corps forever. So you're going to be using Peace Corps as a stepping stone to something else. So that's um, Peace Corps totally supports you um, in, in that capacity, um, for whether it's, you know, from, um, from you know, graduate school um, support to, you know, supporting your projects when you are um, in the Peace Corps. 